So we've been push mowing all of our yard and until we decided to finally get this guy working. It's broken. <laughs> so this year on our Husqvarna, I have had to do a lot of um, mower deck repairs. Uh, mower deck repairs aren't something that I would say are a lot of fun, but <clears throat> they were necessary in our case because um, our mower deck was literally falling off the motor. The, <clears throat> the first issue that we had is we have another spindle assembly that needs to be replaced. Um, the uh, One of the brackets that you attach the mower to the, uh, the mower deck was broken off of the mower deck, so I had to repair that and um, basically weld that back together. So I took that on down to a friend's house. He's not a, a professional welder, but he has a welding, uh, an electric welder, and we were able to weld that back together. I'll uh, test to see how that turned out um, once I get this thing back on there. I think for the, the type of mower this is and the type of use it gets, uh, the way we welded this is going to be just fine. It just needs to be able to hold the deck up. Um, I'm hoping that driving over bumps and hitting things isn't going to just break that right off again. These mower decks have some metal attachments on the underside for uh, the mulching effect to help clear the grass mulch out of the mower. Some of those were bent in a funky way, um, kind of bent up underneath the mower deck. So we ended up having to heat up the metal on this front left side. did a little damage to some of the plastic parts here, but by heating that metal up, we were able to bend it back with a hammer so that it was nice and flat with the, um, the rest of the bottom of the deck and it's not pointing down in a way that's just pushing the grass downward instead of up into the blades. So I think the way that it's designed, the, um, the grass should be able to um, kind of run off on that bottom plate out through the, uh, the mulchers. Uh, I'm not really sure what it's for. I'm hoping we fixed it correctly or at least did the job so it will mow right. Um, finally, we sharpened all of the blades. Um, 
I am going to be getting some new blades here momentarily because these still have a lot of nicks in them, but at least uh, by grinding these sharper um, to get some cutting done, as soon as I can get this put back together, I think these will work just fine. So the only thing I have left right now is to replace the spindle assembly. I actually have some videos on replacing spindle assemblies on these mowers, so I would suggest um, if you want a more detailed uh, spindle assembly replacement, you watch that video. I've already removed the blade from underneath here, so as I kind of go through this, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take this off, but the, um, the blade's already off of there. I'm, I've already kind of partially started working on this repair. Now, for those of you who are doing um, deck repairs and um, want to know how to, to get the deck off, I'm going to be putting the deck back on here in a couple minutes. As I do that, I'll show you uh, where everything goes and how it attaches. Uh, to take it off is just the reverse of what I'm doing to reinstall it. So it's, it's a very simple uh, thing to do, but um, yeah. So I'm going to get started on this spindle assembly repair. That's the last thing I have besides a flat tire to get this mower up and running. So to remove this plastic cover, I'm, I'm just using a 10 millimeter and See, right, it tight. Loosen, loosen that up. There's a bolt on each side, or kind of a screw, bolt, whatever you want to call it. Nut. Get off. So your spindle assembly is pretty much right here. Um, to get those off, it's going to have four bolts underneath there. My 13 fits nicely, so that's what I'm going to use. First one just broke off. It seems like the last time I did this, these kind of just broke off too. They get so rusty over time. That's that's not good. Two of them have just broken. So um, the 13 may have just been a little bit too big. I, mean, I switched to a half and these two that were kind of uh, stripping on me. I'm able to get now. But all four of them broke. I'm going to put a little bit of penetrating oil The problem with the spindle assembly is you've got to be able to get your your pulley off of there and so far I've just kind of got a one big mess here.
So something I would say that you should do, and, and I've done this in, in every single one of my videos, and, and then remember the hard way, before you take out these four bolts, uh, find a way to secure the blade from the bottom to loosen uh, your, your top bolt here. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time getting that thing to come loose. Uh, in order for me to do it, um, I pretty much had to secure the blade kind of against the truck. I got something else wedged in here holding the deck in place, a hammer wedged in there. I got enough things wedged that I was able to loosen this top bolt. Um, but I would definitely try and get this uh, pulley off uh, before you start removing all your other bolts. Because this nut at the top of the, uh, the pulley is a royal pain in the butt to get off if you don't do it ahead of time. It really gets stuck on there real nice. All right, so now that I have that all off, go ahead and pop this out. This is the old spindle assembly. Um, this thing was just a, a royal pain to deal with. So when you're putting your uh, new spindle assembly in, um, now let's see, just kind of came apart on me here. Going to make sure that that spindle assembly has this uh, ring put around it first, and then you'll slide it up underneath here. And these bolts are uh, self-threading, so you just kind of have to put them in until they catch, and then ratchet them down tight. When I tighten these down, just like I would on a wheel. I like to kind of do one side and then go all the way across to the other side and work my way kind of around that way so that I can make sure that everything is going on nice and evenly. So again, I would not um, remove these in the future until you have uh, removed your pulley from the top. This pulley is a little worn out. I probably actually need a new pulley. Looks like it's skipped a lot, but I'm hoping that'll hold for now. You know, I put that screw on there to help me kind of hold everything in place, but it's going to be hard to tighten down until I get the blade on so I have something to, to help hold it as I tighten it down. Now you'll notice on these mowers that there's kind of a star pattern under here. The blade has a star pattern. It, it matches up over top of that. Um, I don't know what happened to the original washer that should be under here. This is part of what caused the problem on my last spindle, so next time I order an assembly, if this, this one's probably gonna go bad again, um, I need to make sure that I, I get uh, the correct bolt and washer that should be going on down here as well. In the meantime, I'm just gonna try and put this in as tight as I possibly can and hope for the best. You never know a shot of driving. Okay. Now we'll tighten this down from the top, get that, uh, that pulley on there the way it should be, and this will be good to go. Use this wrench, and I, you just need to get a good hold on that blade underneath as you turn this to help Tighten the pulley nut back down on there. My righty, righty tighty.
if this doesn't go on tight enough, which means that has to slide down on there, you're not, you're just gonna end up stripping your pulley out. My belt back into place. Put this cover back on there. Giving you an idea of how sharp the grinder was on those blades, I got a nice little cut there just from grabbing the blade to try and tighten this down. So grinder definitely got the blade sharper for us. Um, now I'm just going to take this and reinstall it back underneath the riding mower. Underneath here is uh, fairly simple. You've got this kind of guide bar here on the right hand side if you're sitting on it looking forward or the mulching side. That's going to slide through this little hole down here and then we're going to put a pin in there. I don't know what this bar does. It must act as some sort of guide. There we go. Uh, I put the pin in but I didn't put my washer back on so I need to pull that off put the washer on. washer and then you've just got these kind of like clevis pins of some sort. Okay. It's that one. Now on each side you're gonna have this bar hanging down which has to, this has to go in there with another washer and a pin. So I'm gonna have to use two hands to pick this up. I'll put it through there and then just put those on it to hold it in place. The next one you have on both sides is this arm, which kind of just hangs out. And we're going to run that up. Underneath here there is, is it, there's a bolt right here. So we're gonna put it on there. We're gonna have to use two hands again, but once we put it on there, we just put a washer and another uh, pin in there as well. Okay, so we've got everything connected there, and then the bar goes up and underneath. That is connected. Do that on both sides. And then down here in the center, we have one more bar that needs to go through, and we'll put a washer and that on the other side there. And that holds this kind of front piece in place. And I think that'll be pretty much it. Then the last thing we do is put our belt on right here. And make sure that everything is correct with the belt underneath here before we tighten it down. 
So I'm gonna go back over to the other side, check over the belt, um, put that washer and pin in, and then we'll tighten this down. So this is pretty much it. We're done with the uh, deck repairs. The deck seems to be hanging on there pretty good. There's a wasp right there on the side of this thing. I got stung by one of them in the hand earlier. And for those of you who are wondering um, if activated charcoal works on bee stings, that wasp that was flying around here, it's a, he's a, they're big. I don't, I don't know what, I, I haven't seen wasps that big for a while. I was reaching down inside there. Um, I was having some electrical issues. I, I noticed that the top of my battery is leaking, so I'm, I'm guessing that I have a bad battery. Anyway, I was reaching down inside trying to get to where all the, the grounds and neutrals connect, and the sucker just stung the heck out of me. And I rinsed it under cold water, came back outside, and the, uh, the sting was working its way up my arm, and it just felt like lightning bolts going up my arm. So I went back inside, put some activated charcoal toothpaste, or activated charcoal paste, not toothpaste, just I made a paste out of activated charcoal and put it on the bite. And within like a minute, I would say, it almost felt like the stinging sensation was going back down and, and out where the sting was. So it definitely pulls the venom back out of your, um, your hand or your body. But uh, anyway, activated charcoal works on bee stings. This, uh, the mower deck is done and ready to go. Um, we haven't used this mower in a year. I know it turns over because I've, um, I've been out here kind of jumping the starter and, and trying to crank things up. I'm not getting any power at all when I turn this in the hour meter or anything else. So my thought is that at this point it's a battery issue. Um, I've, I'll probably replace the battery and then um, if, it, if it still doesn't start, uh, my next point of contact is going to be that ignition switch. Um, then I'll work my way through there, probably the ignition switch, and then there's a safety switch underneath the seat. Um, that'll probably go, and I'll try it and see if I can get this thing to... Uh, start with the replacement of those two things but I know it will turn over I've uh, I, like I said I kind of jumped the starter um, with power right off of the truck and it and it was clicking over but uh, it does I mean the starter could be part of my issue um, I have no idea this thing been around for quite some time. <laughs>